Okay guys, episode 5 in my scary Halloween thing. Um, what I intend to do is do a bit of electronics, see if I can make a either a motion sensor or a sound activated item that I can add to this. But being as it's rather nice and warm outside at the moment, I'm just going to put a bit more uh, paint on here. I'm going to use the old uh, crinkled plastic bag and some pretty <laughs> yucky green coloured paint there just to put, give it a bit of um, mould lichen up on the outside. So I'm going to do that and then I should go back inside and get on with the electronics. overdo it. Probably do. Yep, I think that'll do. Okay, now we get on with some electronics. Right then, the plan is to see if we can use this bicycle light. This is the one. That's the on-off button that also steps it through the different sequences of flashing. Um, so the plan is to see if I can operate that with some sort of either motion sensor or sound activated switch. The actual circuitry is on the back of that little strip of LEDs. If I just take it out it's incredibly simple. It's just that little black dot is the actual circuitry that runs those LEDs. That there is where the push button makes contact and down there is the power input. So I'm going to see if I can attach something to that end 
a, well, uh, either a clap switch or sound activated switch or a motion, motion sensor that does the on off for me. It doesn't need to be one of those switches that stays on for a length of time. It only needs to be a momentary pulse. So I think I should be able to make a very simple sound activated switch that will do that. So we'll have a look. I'll have a quick look on YouTube, see if there's any examples that I can link to. In my little junk box I found this little circuit. It was originally a sound activated light. Um, I've butchered it for other purposes because it died, but it had three LEDs on this side. Um, it's got the microphone which will be handy for what I want. Uh, the rest of it's fairly butchered but I'll be able to use that microphone for this uh, sound activated switch that I'm going to make now. Okay, just so I can keep track of what I'm doing, I've taken this apart now. That's the LED strip with the circuit on the back. I've run some wires around just so I can keep that separate and I've brought these wires out from where the push switch would be. So all I need to do now is touch those together, switches it on, touch them together again, first cycle, second cycle, third cycle, and off again. So now these two wires are the ones that I want to include in some sort of um, sound activated or motion sensor. So see what we can do. Okay, I've rigged up a clap switch or a sound activated switch um, to operate the bicycle lights. Um, that lead there is the one that actually goes to the switch. I'm not actually that happy with it. It seems to be a bit intermittent. Um, it may be these breadboards again, so say they're, they're rubbish. You've just got to move things a bit and just the vibration tends to set things off. So I'm going to have to hardwire it anyway. But I'm, I'm not that happy with the way this is working. See, it's very intermittent. Sometimes it seems to need a good hard clap to get it to work, and other times it just works with my voice operating it. So, um, not that happy with it. Um, I've got another microphone, uh, which seems to be a bit more sensitive, or I could try adjusting my adjustable resistor there. You can see what I say, you've just got to knock it a little bit and it all starts going anyway. That one's <laughs> changed as it goes along anyway. have to blow on this one and it changes and as you can see it's changing with background noise so it's much more sensitive that microphone. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure what to do. I think what I'm going to have to do is hardwire it onto one of my prototyping boards which I've got somewhere.
think I have to throw these um, breadboards away, they just seem to be rubbish. So next stage, hard wire onto there, solder it in place so that I can make sure it's not just the breadboard itself vibrating around and then decide whether I'm actually going to fit this into my um, headstone which was the original idea. I'm actually having second thoughts on that now. I'm thinking I may actually um, use it as eyes for some plastic rats that I've got. So I'll solder it up together, see how well it works and then make a decision. Right then guys, um, made a decision. I'm not going to add any extra lights to my headstone. Um, I was going to add some more flashing red lights on the top, but I think I may use those lights for something else now. Uh, rather keen to use them. I've got some plastic rats that I got out of the pound shop, so I might see if I can put them in as their eyes instead. So what I've done is these lights, which are the eight eyes I've got for my headstone, I've now given them a quick spray with red paint, so um, that'll dull them down a bit because they were a bit bright in the headstone as they were, and it'll obviously give them a bit of colour as well. So that's the next stage, um, and I think that's just about it for the headstone. I'll do another quick video when I've actually assembled it, and then that should be it for the headstone. Alright, there we go. Final assembly. So, so I've coloured the eyes red, gave them a coat of spray paint. I've also put uh, black centres in them, irises or whatever you want to call them. Uh, tarted up the colour scheme a little bit. And uh, that's as far as I'm going to go on this. As I say, I, I was thinking of putting some extra flashing red lights on the top. But I've now decided that would just be overdoing it. So that's the finished article. That was fun. <laughs>